Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly the trades I took and the stats on how I passed these two accounts. And I passed them basically back to back. I, I did one on one day. I passed it. And then the next day I did that one and I passed it $9,000 uh, profit target. And one of them, I hit over $10,000 in just two trades, 100% accuracy. And at the end of the video, if you like trading options or you have any interest in that, I'm going to show you two options trades I took this week, one on Thursday and one on Friday, both on Netflix. Go ahead, smash the like button for me, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and check out the link in the description and the comment section to Apex Trading. You'll have my coupon code there. You're going to get a massive discount. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, guys. So here you see it right on the screen. These were two and done. It was just two trades done out of the way. $10,640 right here. You can see it gross PL. And then when we come on down here to total PL after commissions, $10,580. Remember, you only need $9,000 in order to pass the $150,000 evaluation. And I did it with $10,580, just took two trades. But I'm gonna show you the charts here where I'm gonna show you exactly these trades. But before we do, I want you to see the stats because the stats are important. Even though there's only two trades here, I want you to no notice something. It's 100% accuracy. <laughs> There's not a whole lot to notice because you can't really compare losers to winners here because there are no losers because on this channel, we don't lose. So four minutes, 35 seconds, the longest trade time. Average trade time was two minutes, 44 seconds. You can't really extrapolate a whole lot of data from just taking two trades. All right. There's a lot of two trade wonders on YouTube, but we're going to go ahead here and I'm going to indicate for you right now. Go check out the rest of my videos, including about... 500 to 1,000 live trade videos on this channel. Anyways, here you see the dates of the trades. Okay, max run up $10,592. Largest winning trade, 4,900. Average winning trade, $2,660. Longest, uh, largest losing trade, zero. Average losing trade, zero. Standard deviation losing trade, average losing trade time, longest losing trade time, zero, 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 because we don't lose. Right here, you just got to see it to believe it. Max drawdown, $30. So you know how that works, but there's no losing trades in itself. All right, winning trades, 100%. Here you see how we just start off right here, 5000 6000 bang, $10,580 later. And uh, that's it. I mean, here are the trades. This was the banger. This was the best trade of this account, okay? And I actually did copy trade this one on the other account. So I did take this trade simultaneously. I know words. And right here, you could see what this trade was all about. You see this previous little pivot bounce zone on the uh, NQs, right? This was very similar on the Qs chart. So on the QQQ, I was eyeing the same level. And you see right here how we bounced, boom, bounced, nice run up, right? That's telling you this is obviously a support zone. Now, we broke through that support zone on nasty price action. And what does that automatically tell you? Well, it's known that when you break support and it's retested, it generally can be looked at to now become an area of resistance. It doesn't mean it's always going to be resistance. It doesn't mean every single time support breaks and gets retested, it's going to be resistance any more than resistance levels that break to the upside when retested again on a pullback is going to be support always. That's not the case. All right. That's why we trade. That's why we manage risk and we have stop loss zones. So right here, we came up into that zone and we started to reject. Bang, bang, right into right into my to my short position and then wrote it straight down. Look, honestly, I like to scale out of my trades. And had this been something that I was doing in my paid account, all right, or my own private account, I would have begun to scale out of the trade, meaning right here where I took profits, it would have been my first take. So if I had eight contracts, I would have dropped off probably two to four contracts right there, maybe even five contracts, held on to some looking for further extension to the downside. But because we were in an evaluation, 
for the prop firm, okay? Remember, coupon code in the description and comment section, get a massive discount on your evaluation account. I saw my p &L. I do not trade my, my, own, my unrealized p &L. I trade the chart. But in the evaluation phase, I saw my p &L, and I was up over $10,000 when I only need nine. You know what I did? I just market ordered out. I boop, just pressed the button and that's it. The rest is history. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I had this set up here. You could see here, remember how earlier we said we broke a support zone and it turned into resistance and I got short? Where was my stop loss, guys? I'm gonna let you answer it. Answer it. As a matter of fact, answer it in the comment section. Where was the stop loss on that trade? Now we're gonna move on over here to this one. This was previously a resistance area. Resistance area, resistance area. We broke up and through that level with amazing price action, okay? Volume did start to increase just slightly uh, right in here, although the volume was decreasing as we pushed up, not something I like to see. And then we pulled back into what? The previous resistance zone. By pulling back into that previous resistance zone, that to me is gonna be something to look at. Look at here, the first candle pullback, no entry for me. Second candle of the pullback, I thought I missed it, okay? I thought I missed it because we pulled back into that zone and then look at the wick we put into it, showing what? Good buying volume in front of that zone. So right here on this third buying, can I'm sorry, this third pullback of consolidation, this third candle of consolidation, can I speak today? I went ahead and got long right there, just a starter position. I added right here, and then we got a quick pop to the highs. Now look, you see me again, drop my entire position there. That's not something that I historically do. If you've gone through my courses at the day trader chat room, I have options courses, futures courses, the regular day trading courses, the advanced day trading courses, swing trading courses. I got them all right there, description section, comment section. You can buy them individually or the full curriculum if you want. You know that I emphasize on scaling out of positions. But again here, we pulled all the way up in here and I'm like, well, this account's basically done now. I don't need to scale out of this position, okay? I don't need to scale out of this position. In the previous one, even though I had made only 7,000, remember I was trading it in a copy trader and the account I was trading in, that one is the one that made the $10,000. So I exited out of the entire position. That's why one account passed with, with uh, 9,000 and change or 10,000. I don't remember exactly which one's the one that had the 10,000. I think it was this one. And then that account only, yeah, that's right. And then that account only had 7,000 and change, okay? Now, because that account only had 7,000 and change, I had to trade it again. And we had this nice bounce push up to the highs, exit the entire position out there, done. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the bonus part. I'm gonna show you the options trades I took this week. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna show you my two options play. I took one on Thursday after trading futures, um, and it was intended to be an overnight swing trade. Uh, part of me wishes I would have held on to it because I would have gotten another 100%. It would have been a 200% winner versus a 100% winner. Um, so, ugh. Okay, and then the next one was the next day, Friday in the morning. It was a day trade uh, and it was put options again. Both of these trades were put options on Netflix. Now, the very first one here was put options. All right, I grabbed put options. The 365 next week, Friday's expiration, if I'm not mistaken, put option. And I grabbed those right in here. Why? Look, the queues were very weak. The overall market was looking weak. We were at key levels that we were pulling back away from. And Netflix had just been relatively weak throughout the time, see? So right there, I went, I went ahead, not inside of there, inside of here, after this failed attempt at the highs. Um, it was either there or here uh, before that. Regardless, it doesn't matter because the entry was the same zone with the stop being up here, okay? And that was where my stop loss was. And I went ahead and entered the put options there. I didn't even sit here, okay? I literally right clicked on my chart, set up, set a uh, an alert that if the price action got up above this high to let me know, and then I was out. I was literally out on the road. I would have grabbed my phone, uh, pulled over, and just exited the position, and that's it. I would have taken my my loss and moved on. So right there, I went ahead, entered the trade. Yeah, I, I think it was right here. I entered the trade and I set my stop loss zone up here above the highs 
of the day. By the time I got back home, all right, enjoying some time down here in the Keys, we were actually right in here. We were right in there. And I was like, well, damn, looks like I'm getting paid nicely. And I went ahead and right here on this retest of the lows, I exit the position. Once we didn't crack that low, I went ahead and exited the position and booked it. Made, I don't remember how much I made, but I'll show you because I have the screenshots of the PLs. So right there, I booked that one. Now, let's move on to the next trade, which is the next trade was a day trade Friday morning. Jesse, why didn't you trade Friday? Uh, why didn't you trade futures Friday morning? Well, because all my accounts, like I said, have already hit the profit target. So all I did was come in the morning, hit an MNQ on, on, on the accounts that I have pending to add my my day to it. And then I said, OK, well, I'm going to trade some of some options this morning because I didn't want to trade my PAs because I was supposed to go and set up and get ready to go fishing. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to take an options trade, be done with the day, book a little bit of profit. If I take a loss, big deal. But I want to get in there and get something. And where do I want to do this? I want to do this over on Netflix. So Netflix, if you don't follow me on Twitter or in the Discord, free Discord link down there, um, you're failing because I post my watch list every morning. And I said, guys, I'm watching Netflix 359 area. If 359 area breaks to the upside, I'm going to watch for call options for, you know, a gap fill, a gap fill trade. But if 359 holds resistance, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look for what? I'm going to look for further downside. Okay. And here we have 359 getting tested. We fail up there. We cannot hold VWAP. I thought if we held VWAP here, we could have a shot at a nice move back to the highs and get a nice fat breakout. But the cues were not having it. The market was just not liking the action on the day. Right here, I went ahead and grabbed puts and I took profits into this quick move down here. Now, did I miss out on the rest of this move? I did, but I'm pretty sure some members in the Discord caught it because I was on there and I said, guys, if we can't get above VWAP here, I gotta get going. I'm not gonna be able to get, take this trade, but if we can't get above VWAP here, watch for, for the downside. And sure enough, you got it. Now, let me go ahead and show you the PLs on this one. So here you have Friday morning's day trade. That was really nice, all right? That was really, really nice trade. I had a total of 10 contracts on this one and there you go that was a banger the first take profit was just money shot i was long from a dollar 60 something on these and i took these off at 224 225 i don't remember exactly to the penny but 224 225 i took those off and then i held on to these looking for further downside but these were same day expirations as you can see these were the the 355 uh 10 13 uh, put options so i was really i should have taken more off here but i was really i was getting a little greedy i was looking for that quick flush through the lows right there and i was like okay well i'm gonna take profits next at 260s and then i'm gonna take profits off like at 310 and i'm out of this trade Pfft, huge winner but we didn't quite get there so right here i took the rest of the profits off i think it was a dollar 99 or a dollar 95 something like that but hey look man that's good money, all right, for very little work on the day. Took that and ran. Now, let me show you the prior days at $3.16, and I was out six oh five. dollars Just about 100% almost on those, and it was an all-day hold. It was an all-day hold. Opened them in the morning, closed them off in the afternoon. The idea was to take them off the next morning, but I was concerned with the next morning, a big gap down, and I would have been salivating at all the profit. And then by the time the market opened, we would have taken back that a, a chunk of that gap down. And, you know, with time decay coming into effect, these were, they expired that day. Um, I didn't want to see those profits just vanish and disappear. So I went ahead and booked it. It's 100% profit. So well, why would you not book it, right? Went ahead and booked it. Had I held on, the next day in the morning, we did have that kind of big gap down. And then we had a bounce on Netflix and pre-market, but the bounce wasn't sustained. And to my surprise, by the time the bell opened up, we had pulled all the way back down. And these were going off between $9 and change and 10 bucks. So, you know, instead of being a $300 some odd winner, it could have been a, what, $600 winner. All right, you live and you learn, right? But it's been, I've been in that position where I've had that same trade on. And then the next day, instead of making 100, 200%, you know, I'm lucky if I make 20% because 
we take back so much of the move in the pre-market session and you can't exit this in pre-market one more reason why i love futures but guys that is it for me today i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did smash the absolute nonsense out of that like button all right comment in the comment section below let me know what's up hope you're having a great day had a great weekend any questions swing on by remember to check out the links in the description to the free discord my courses and my discount code for apex trader funding and i hope to catch you on another one peace